Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at three of the most powerful 100 square inch rackets on the market today that you should consider in 2024. These being the new Diadem Nova V3, the Wilson Ultra V4 and the Selenko Blackout 300. All great rackets in their own right. Now in this video I'm not bothering to include the Pure Drive although they are heavily based off it because it probably won't be extremely long before we see the new generation after the release of the Strike and by now it's a bit dated and boring to review that racket. At least these three rackets in the review we can expect them to be the current version of their model for at least a few more years. Diadem did send me the racket to review but did not ask for any favors they even allowed me to do this straight up comparison review so my views are unbiased and any feedback as with all rackets I review is constructive feedback only. I think small brands like Diadem and Selinka are doing a great job at providing legitimate alternate options to the market competing against the big brands so I salute them and hope they continue to innovate and compete. As always, if you like the video, help me by giving it a thumbs up for the algorithm, subscribe for more reviews, follow me on Instagram for more updates, and you can support the channel by buying me a coffee or giving me a super thanks down below. Let's quickly move on to the specs. All rackets come in a standard 100 square inch head size. They are 300 grams unstrung with strings added around 318 grams strung. The beam widths are slightly varied, all tapered but thick nonetheless. Diadem lists theirs at 23.5 millimeter tapered beam on the website, but they don't have the exact measurements listed there. So I asked for clarification and they gave me measurements of 23.5, 24.5 and 23.5. The Ultra 100 has the thickest beam by far with a 24, 26, 6.5 and 24.2 millimeter taper. Finally, the Selenko Blackout is 23.5, 26 and 23.5. The balance points of the Nova and Ultra are four points strung on average, whilst the Blackout is the most headlight at around six points strung. The stiffness ratings show that the Nova has the lowest rating at 69. Diadem uses a couple of dampening technologies to reduce vibrations, most notably the addition of a finish they call Craybon, which they used on the latest V3 Elevate rackets as well, which is that velvet style paint, which which is similar to something that you expect from Wilson's countervail technology. The Ultra is listed at a 70 RA stiffness rating alongside their 45 braid tech and the Blackout is the highest stiffness at 71 RA. You're going to expect high stiffness ratings in these rackets to allow for that free power generation. They all come in an open 1619 string pattern and their swing weights should average around 317 to 320. For string setups and modifications, you'll see on the overlay, for all rackets are strung at my regular tension at 48 pounds. I thought it was a good range and played as expected without requiring any tension adjustments. The Nova, I mostly experimented with a more headlight balance when I customized it with an extra 7 grams to the butt cap. The Ultra, I looked to get more stability with 4 grams total at 3 and 9. And the Blackout are modified with the weighted modular butt caps with 5 grams extra, also for a better headlight balance. All modifications that I did were to address something that I felt lacking that could do with some additional help. Let's start with feel, stiffness and comfort. Nova's Craybon paint adds a rubbery or velvet style finish that you either love or hate. Personally, before my Gravity Pro, I used to main the Blade V6 countervail in the full Blackout Noir version. Now it's mostly indifferent to the feel as it doesn't really bother me entirely to play with muted rackets because I have no reliance on feel for that feedback and I only use instinctual targeting and timing when I hit. That being said, the Nova is going to give you a very solid response where the racket feels sturdy and not harsh due to the dampening technique technologies though you do get more of a muted feel with a little bit of ball pocketing essentially the feeling is when you hit the ball the overall racket maintains a steady position the ball will not sit on the strings for very long and will shoot off fast to where you were targeting with the Ultra, the Ultra implements that very distinct feel after implementing the 45 tech to the layout. And this feel is typically akin to what you get in the Pro Stuff V14, Blade V8, V9, and the Clash V2 series. With a crisp string like Alu Power at lower tensions, the impact from the string contact has this airiness to it, where even in a higher stiffness racket like the Ultra, it has quite a bit of give, which makes them seem more comfortable, but I also find them to have this slightly artificial feel that I can easily distinguish from their whole line of rackets with the 45 tech. Neither are pro or con really as much as the Graybon paint feel. I would say the Ultra has the most ball pocketing with the stiffer string setup in this regard. 
finally the blackout 300 has probably the most rawest feeling stiffness which reminds me closer to what the 2015 pure drive was like interestingly although the stiffest racket it was comfortable to begin with when using the same tension and string setup as the nova when i played them side by side freshly strung but once the nova settled in then it became noticeably more comfortable than the blackout but some people may prefer the overall raw and direct response from the blackout now I'm most notably sensitive in my hand, wrist and sometimes elbow with high stiffness or high tension setups. In all three rackets I felt they didn't provide any noticeable discomfort, even off the first hit with fresh strings and the same tension for all of them. Not all stiffness ratings are equal and vibration frequency is probably a more important number when it comes to comparing stiffness. With power, the toughest thing to distinguish between these power frames obviously is how much power that differs to each other. Overall, because they all are stiff, thick beam, 100 square inch rackets at the end of the day, they're all going to be mostly in the same realm of power levels, especially if they are weighted up similar. But straight off the bat in stock form, I would have to give the nod to the Nova 3 as being the most powerful because in stock form it felt the most solid through contact. And because of that sturdiness, it provided a little bit more penetration, stability and plow through compared to the others. The Ultra for me felt the weaker of the three for whatever reason, even though it was the thickest beam out of all of them. The frame seemed to lack the ability to hold its ground sometimes when making contact, which is why I opted to add that four grams at three and nine to increase the stability and swing weight to give it that extra plow through, which absolutely helped after the customization. Blackout was comparably powerful as the Nova, but there was a differentiating characteristic that made it play quite different to the other two, which I'll speak about later. For maneuverability, for the Nova, maneuverability is manageable. These kinds of rackets in general are not particularly favorable to my swing style traditionally because I have a very rounded, long and full swing. A thick beam racket that's a bit more head heavy is never going to suit my game to a T, but always the compensation for that is that these rackets come in at a low static weight and lower swing weight. So if you have a more efficient and shorter swing style, you'll generally not find maneuverability issues so much. Because of the overall package of forgiveness and punching power the Nova provides, whilst maneuverability may not be the best of the three you also find that you don't actually need to have to swing as big due to those power levels that I mentioned. With that said the reason I added extra weight to the handle to bring it around six points headlight strung and still in a reasonably light package of 330 grams strung was to allow for the extra freedom to swing which benefited my ground strokes and serve a lot and surprisingly to me it took weight incredibly well and I much preferred the way it felt overall with that added maneuverability. Comparably, I found the Ultra to be the most user-friendly out of the three. For this style of racket shape, it just moved right. It had the right balance and weight, and it felt very free to swing. But that experience was slightly compromised in stock form due to the stability within the faster pace rally. If you were the attacker using the Ultra, then it was much more suitable. But when you were on the defense, it seemed to flutter a little bit without that extra weight that I added later on. Right between the two frames, you get the Blackout, which was the fastest through the air by a noticeable amount. It found an in between point where it was easy to swing like the Ultra but packed a better rounded overall performance package closer to the Nova without having to be modified at all. With control, with the Nova, you cannot be swinging out in every ball, which is what I'm used to when I'm using more advanced player rackets that are more control. You need to pick and choose the right balls to accelerate big because the Nova is going to give you power in all forms. Therefore, you need to play more disciplined if you are someone who loves to swing out. You need to vary your swing speeds, opting to block and redirect more balls before punishing your opponent with a kill shot for a winner or forced error. That is in part that you can absorb a lot of pace and redirect a lot of balls without having to swing the racket as much as you would normally need to with the thinner beam flexible rackets. And you'll find that with these kinds of rackets, guiding and blocking a lot will yield plenty of effective shots. 
Control in this sense is probably where you'll suffer the most, but keeping in mind that you are not meant to be redlining the, with these rackets anyway. The Ultra is a bit more tame in that sense that will probably allow you to swing out a little bit more aggressively because it doesn't have as much free penetration, which makes it a fun racket in its own right. But the overall name of the game is still the same as the Nova, as these are not precision machines and are similar builds at the end of the day. But I did feel a little bit more in tune with the targeting when going bigger in comparison. I felt the blackout due to the high maneuverability had the best control, but that is mainly due to the spin control. Line drives are roughly in the same category as the other two rackets, but spin was something different with the blackout. In the spin category, this Nova had great spin potential. It can be penetrating, it can be heavy, it can have a super high arc, but it's a little bit more difficult to access. You really have to hit the right angle at the right time. That's where a more headlight balance came into play and that gave me a little bit extra freedom to be a little bit more lively with the wrist. When I added that extra weight to the handle, then I was quite a bit more free flowing. And then I found that the performance of the racket started to suit the way I wanted to play a little bit more due to customizations. The Ultra is the flattest playing racket out of the three, but with these kinds of rackets, it's inevitable that you still can achieve quite a lot of spin with the right stroke if you possess high swing speed and you come underneath the ball heavy enough. But I guarantee if you compare it to real spin oriented rackets like an Aero or V-Core 100, the RPMs will noticeably be different if you can swing the same. Given that I did use Allo Power, which is a flat poly only, a spin string is going to accentuate the ability to spin generate. But just keep in mind that the Ultra was not really designed for that. On the other hand, the Blackout was a spin machine and it felt like that was built for that purpose. Where the Nova predominantly felt more focus on power and penetration. Surprising to me, the Blackout actually should be categorized more in the Spin 100 category alongside the Error and the Vehicle 100. And it's because the strings really can grab and grip the ball hard and the additional maneuverability is the best when cutting upwards through the air. Now, as I said, the Nova actually has probably a very comparable amount of spin, but it's not quite as easy to access. I felt that every shot for the Blackout, I could come underneath the ball with ease Hence my comments towards the spin control because that heavy spin is just going to dip so hard every time you swipe it. That makes it a little bit more difficult to fly unexpectedly. So similar to the wideout line, both the blackout and the wideout are more spin and power than their straight up power frames. I'd say that all three rackets were great serving rackets in their own right. And that's because of the high stiffness rating, a more direct response, which is allowing for instantaneous targeting and the light form factor for all of them which allows for max racket head speed. The Nova in my opinion had the most powerful serves with the Blackout 300 and the Ultra not that far behind. The Ultra probably had the best precision for serves where I felt like I hit my spots the most often but it did come at a sacrifice with a bit of power especially without that extra weight. Blackout had the heaviest spin, but the Nova was marginally almost no different. It provided a lot of spin, especially for the kick serves. They were both effective and slicers jumped away on the sliders as well. For forgiveness levels, honestly, you're going to be hard pressed to find out how much difference there is in forgiveness between the three. So I'm not going to comment much on the amount because off center shots are going to produce a powerful response on the outer hoop regardless. I'll just say with the Nova, due to the massive power levels and the sturdiness of the stability, you'll find it easier when you're late, absorbing a high amount of pace from your opponent's ball, that the racket will transfer that energy back into the ball without that much effort. So that will provide you a ton of free depth when you are defending. For a player like myself who is used to swinging and swinging for every ball, it'll take some kind of adjustment for me to get used to this kind of play style. But if you don't naturally possess a lot of racket head speed in general, that's particularly the type of player that these rackets would be targeting, I would imagine. On the Ultra, it's going to have a slightly more tame response where you might need to swing a little bit more than you would with the Nova. But for the Blackout, similar in comparison, it's going to produce the most spin when you are hitting off center.
with stability. The Nova had naturally the most stability, which is a bit of a surprise if you look at the builds of the three rackets. And that's because the 3 and 9 portion of the frame is not as thick as the other two, but it did give the most amount of stability, making return of serves and defending when blocking and absorbing high pace a breeze. The Ultra, as mentioned, needed a bit of a bump up in the swing weight and static weight to bring it up to the same levels as the Nova. But what you get in return is that it feels a bit more free flowing and user friendly to swing, which might suit the slightly higher level intermediates as they typically might have a little bit more racket head speed generation, which you would use that in pairing with good timing to make up for the lower stability levels. The Blackout felt closer to the Nova in terms of stability, but the difference was that feel from the raw stiffness would reverberate a little bit more vibrations. As I say, if that's a preferential thing, if you like that or not, some people might say it's more responsive and connected in that sense, but the feel from that free stability of the Nova reminds me more of like when you weight up an old school racket and you get that rock solid stability. For volleys, all these rackets are very easy to swing due to their lightweight. Obviously have a lot of free stability in comparison to the general 98 square inch racket or thin beam advanced player frame. The pros to each is that absorbing pace is a breeze. Getting your racket in the right position is easy, which means blocking and reactive volleys for both singles and doubles are where it shines the most. The thing is that each volley is going to have a lot more pop to it due to the trampoline effect from the power potential. So it's probably easier to overshoot volleys a little bit where they will bounce a little too high or if you accidentally swing a little too much you can punch it out. The Nova obviously has the most stable response. The Ultra is just a tad slower through the air in smaller spaces like this but in my opinion had the best type of balance in feel for volleys where you get enough ball pocketing and touch. The Blackout was a little harsher on late volleys when you off-centered it but did provide the most dead response in comparison that may lead to a bit better control but it was just as steady as the Nova and the maneuverability translated from the ground strikes as well. So who's this racket for? They are all roughly in the same category as the specs and playability are great for a range of levels. The type of player that is someone who has a little harder time generating legitimate racket head speed and would benefit from the low weight and high stability as well as powerful response to assist you with getting more depth and forgiveness on defense. Ideally for players who are 3.0 and above. You just need to make sure that with any racket that does have a higher stiffness is that you don't use very high tensions and in my opinion that would be around 50 pounds or above when using a poly setup. At the very least you need to pair it with comfortable strings to compensate the high stiffness. Overall, I thought all three rackets were fun and easy to play with. I haven't played with these kinds of rackets in a long time as I usually favor thinner beamed low stiffness rackets, especially due to my sensitive arm. But surprisingly with these stiffness ratings and whatever kind of technologies that they use for comfort, they do seem to work well enough where even for a sensitive user like me, I'm not having any issues at all. That concludes my review. I do have a rating system at the end of the video to compare all three rackets. Stick around to check that out. And I will have a Blade V9 and a Pure Strike 11620 video on the way soon enough. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.